This conference will now be recorded. All right. I see Rebecca. Um, and uh, Roy Kenyon, are you uh, hearing or seeing us? I am hearing and seeing you. All right. Very good. All right. Um, I think uh, we have all of the. So oh, it's time to start the meeting. You can hear my cuckoo clock. I'll wait. I could mute, but then I couldn't do anything. <laughs> Other meetings I mute and just let others talk, but that doesn't work tonight. All right. Um, before I call the meeting to order, uh, Katie Jacobson, who is chair, had some issues come up that she needs to address. So she's excused tonight as uh, vice chair. I'll run the meeting. And um, we uh, have a, pardon me? Okay, if you're not going to talk, uh... unfortunately, Doug, now you're muted. Right. Okay. There we go. Um, yeah. So I'll call the meeting to order. I we have a quorum of commissioners. Both Commissioner Claire and I are present, and. I'll, uh, if I may, take the liberty for the mayor and uh, congratulate him on having his entire council present. So um, with that, um, I am uh, used the sound check really for purposes of introduction unless, oh, and Shannon, uh, Shannon, you're also on the uh, call to Shannon Bocare, the uh, city manager of Yahans. Um, so welcome. Unless there's anyone that uh, wishes to make any other introductory remarks, uh, I think we all know we've been through these work sessions before. It's an opportunity really for the county and uh, the city councils to meet once a year and talk about common issues, uh, certainly make sure we're uh, aligned on the issues that uh, are of most importance to both of us. And um, I think, um, again, it's uh, an opportunity just to uh, work together which uh, is in the best interest, I think, for all of us and uh, for the county. So with that thought, um, we have an agenda. Um, and uh, I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight issues. Uh, and um, I'll, does the Yahats uh, City Council have access to the agenda? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, okay. all the members of the council have it. Okay, so I won't go through it. Um, uh, so the first one would be a COVID-19 update. And uh, Rebecca Austin, who's uh, our Director of Public Health, is uh, present. So Rebecca, give us an update and um, tell us uh, where we're headed. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner. So um, I'd like to frame my updates as the three C's, the counts, the concerns, and the community. So to start out with the counts, um, we have 362 positive cases in our county. We have so far, sadly to say, seven deaths. And um, the state is at 13,081 uh, positive tests, positive cases. And I think the, the changes that we're seeing happening across the state are that uh, COVID is in a younger population now. If you remember when we first started out, it was the older population over 60, 65 that was being hardest hit. And now our, most of our cases are between uh, 20 and 29 year olds. And then um, i just like to mention uh, the positivity rate because there's a lot of confusion about that. So people think that the more testing that we do, um, of course, the more cases we're gonna have. And so we like to look at the percentage of positive cases against total cases that we've had. And um, so in Lincoln County, we're a little over 6% right now. That's our rate. So that means 6% of all the tests that we've done are, are coming back positive. And just to give you a reference for that, um, statewide, it's about 4%. In Multnomah County, it's about 4%. And then among our regional leaders, um, Benton is at 1% and Lynn is at 2%. And again, Lincoln County, 
is a little above 6%. So that tells you a little something about um, how, um, how, how many people are transmitting this disease. So the higher the percentage rate, of course, um, the more there is transmission going on in your community. So we aren't as bad off as some of our colleagues, especially in Eastern Oregon. For example, now Hewitt County, which is a very, very large county and sparsely populated, right on the border of um, Idaho, has a 16% positivity rate. Wow. They are really, um, really suffering out there. Um, so then I'm gonna move on from the counts to um, the concerns that I have. And I apologize to my county colleagues who have heard me ranting about this for a couple of days now. I'm still on the same rant. <laughs> so well, I think the rant now. is, excuse me, Rebecca, this is Doug. I think the rant is important information. So uh, it needs to be repeated <laughs> probably more than once for uh, all of us. Yeah, I think I, the reason I apologize is because it's not really in my nature to rant, but um, you know, there's so much that we are all taking in and trying to cope with and to adjust to. Uh, the COVID itself is something that none of us have ever lived through before, a pandemic that has affected this country um, just devastating. So, and so when we have other struggles on top of that, uh, it makes it particularly challenging. So my biggest concern today is that we really only had two, two mitigation methods available to us to try to control this disease, right? One of them was um, the testing. So along with the testing, when you test people, you get positives. You contact trace all of their contacts, who they might have infected, and then you isolate everybody for 14 days. That's, that's a really um, smart way to try to um, control uh, an outbreak. Uh, the other mitigation that we have is basically um, six foot distancing, wearing your mask and uh, washing your hands. So those are the two things that we have in our toolbox that we can help control this uh, outbreak. And really one of them has now been taken away from us. So the whole testing thing that we have been working at for months now to get testing up and running and um, useful enough that we could make an impact has really gone in a very bad direction for us. Um, and it's not, it's not just us in Lincoln County, it's really the whole country. So what is happening is because the testing is linked to really a national, national supply, uh, these are national companies that uh, do the testing. And so we really rely on, on the, the, um, the nation as a whole to help us out in this regard. And when there are, can everybody oh, somebody mute, mute needs to mute, uh, with the exception of Rebecca, who's speaking, we are getting a, some feedback a echo feedback. there. Muted, 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 muted. Ooh, ooh. There we go. Thank you. So, um, so what's happening is because we've got these severe hot spots in the southern part of our country, uh, Florida in particular, but also Texas and Arizona, those states are um, taking all, all the resources are going to those states to help them. And so we are feeling that uh, very much so. And we, we are having, we're struggling with uh, a backlog in our testing. So we have, um, some tests that have been sitting in the Quest Lab, which is a national company, in the Quest Lab here locally for, we're now on our 12th day. And these aren't just like people who we think it would be a good idea to test them. These are our residents in our long-term care facilities. And this is why I'm nearly coming unglued because this is a very high risk population. And we cannot prevent outbreaks in our long-term care facilities when we don't know who is testing positive. So it's critical for our work 
to um, protect these people in these congregate care settings from transmitting the disease. So that is a really, really challenging. So this backlog, I mean, you know, 14 days is the uh, quarantine time. And we're looking at 12 days tomorrow will be 13 days. Um, so that's a problem. I'm hearing from um, our partners at Samaritan that they're now getting very worried about the supply chain. So again, the supply chain is a national um, run operation and nothing has been done to try to shore that process up. So now, because all the resources are going to the southern part of the country, we cannot get testing kits, we can't get reagent, and this is really going to hamper our abilities uh, to test people, let alone get the test resulted. And then last is that the, the country has been making an effort to bring on more and more different platforms of tests. And, um, but the problem with that is that because a lot of these platforms are new, uh, they're not all as reliable as uh, the PCR, which is what we've been doing from the get-go, which is the, the swab uh, in the nasal pharyngeal area to get a sample and then we test that. So we have um, quicker ways of testing, but they're not as reliable so that we have to back it up with the PCR test. So that is really hindering our work. It's causing more work for people. And um, you know, we don't wanna discourage that because we need those innovative platforms, but we also have to be patient with working all the bugs out of them. So uh, that is a huge concern of mine. And then the other concern really is what we have left is uh, the six foot distancing the wearing the face coverings or the masks and washing our hands. And I think we're all very aware of that as our, as our tools. And we certainly have been pushing that message out in our Keep Lincoln County Open uh, posters and social media posts and everything that we're doing. You're gonna start seeing them on the back of buses now. So we're doing as much as we can, but I think, um, it sort of leads me to my last C, which is our community. And I do think, um, I have said from the get-go, it's gonna take us all working together to try to beat this thing. But I think where we're at now, it's not so much the, the sprint, which I feel we've been on since uh, the end of February, but we're now into the marathon. So um, we're not seeing any, any letting up of this. In fact, this is the season where we should see a lot of letting up, right? Um, because the coronavirus is very opportunistic, just like the flu, and um, it will come back, roaring back um, in the colder weather, and especially when we're all inside and it can spread so much easier inside than it can outside. So um, we have to settle into our new norm uh, we have to learn how to be creative and how to uh, work together to really normalize. This is our life now. And I guess that's what we all really need to come to terms with. This is our life. And so wearing a mask, keeping six feet away from each other and washing our hands should be just becoming automatic to many of us. And I think what we're going to have to do is... Um, you know, get more creative, get innovative. I think that's what this country is built on. It's what we've always done. And we really need to um, empower ourselves to uh, get more creative instead of wringing our hands. And trust me, I've been doing a lot of wringing my hands, still am. But I'm also trying to think a little bit outside the box and really listening to people that maybe not be quite in step with us on some things because I think they are our innovators. So for example, I got a phone call the other day from somebody who was very displeased about what public health was doing. And um, I have not had a chance to talk to this person because he didn't leave me his name or his phone number, but I really listened to what he was saying and listened in between the lines of what he was saying and tried to stay very neutral and not be offended by what he was saying because I do think that's what's going to change how we all respond to this is to really maintain um, openness, uh, open hearts, um, open minds, 
to what we can do in our communities to help. And I know that he was not um, meaning, he wasn't meaning any harm. He really was frustrated like many of us are. But what came out of that is I think a pretty good idea actually. And I wanna pass it on to you because I feel like he wanted public health to do this, but I'm thinking I don't have the staff to do this, but it's a pretty good idea actually. And especially living in a, a tourist area that he wanted me to go out and hand out masks to everybody on the streets. Um, so people in public health could do that. And I'm thinking, well, that wouldn't be a real good use of our time, but it could be something that the cities pick up and come up with some kind of kiosk or um, oh, what do you call it? Like a little booth where they had masks and, and uh, maybe hand sanitizer that they could just give away. And I think, you know, instead of just thinking, oh, that's so hard to do, you know, or how would we get all that stuff? It would be great if somebody would pick that ball up and run with it, because I do think it could uh, bring us all a little bit more peace of mind. And who knows how many uh, people we could salvage from getting the coronavirus if we did something like that in our communities. So, um, that's, that's basically what I wanted to say, is that our new normal is gonna challenge us every day, um, but in order to survive, we must adapt. So thank you very much, and I'm happy to take your questions. Mute. Let me unmute. Um, let, uh, I'll just go through uh, the uh, city councilors uh, alphabetically and if you have a question you can answer it that avoids everyone talking at the same time so um alphabetically max uh, i'll save the mayor for last your honor um max any questions you're, you're muted you're muted but i assume you have no questions sorry i couldn't get in for a little while but i'm i'm here I don't have any questions at this time. Okay. Um, next would be, uh, let's see, I'm trying to do this alphabetically. So I guess that'd be Mary Ellen O'Shaughnessy. Again, Mary Ellen, you're muted. All right, well, we'll come back to Mary Ellen. Jim, I see you, um, any questions? Uh, no, I don't have any questions, but I really want to thank Rebecca. She's been very professional and it's nice to have a professional opinion that you can respect. Thank you for all the work you've been doing and uh, I agree with you 100%. All right, thank you, Jim. Uh, Leslie. Any questions, Leslie? I heard you earlier. All right, well, uh, we'll move on to the mayor. Thank John, you. Thank Go you, ahead, John. I appreciate that. No, I don't have any questions for Rebecca. I, I appreciate her update. It was very thorough. All right, and uh, I'm gonna, uh, add a couple of comments, but I'm also going to recognize that we've already taken about 18, now 19 minutes, uh, and we've got about seven items left. But a couple of things that have come up. Uh, number one, um, I have had uh, several conversations where, as Rebecca pointed out, when you look at the percentage of positive tests, uh, the immediate response from some people is, well, of course, we test more people. Uh, if you understand percentages, when you compare percentages of positive tests in one area to another area, you're equalizing the number of testing. So again, when our positive test rate is 6% compared to 2% for, um, what was it, Lane County or whomever, uh, we're three times as bad, folks, and it's not because we're testing more people. So that's my first point. Second point, um, I've had some questions come up about when's the county going to go to phase two so all the businesses can open up or more businesses can open up. And um, we are on the governor's watch list. We're one of eight counties. Uh, all eight are rural, which surprised me when I heard the list. And um, 
frankly, with the kind of information that uh, Rebecca has shared and the fact that we're on the governor's watch list, uh, I can't imagine that we would be approved uh, if we applied to phase uh, two. And I have to be honest, as a leader, um, I think it would be irresponsible to apply to go to phase two when we're dealing with uh, an increasing uh, number of cases and um, really a, a issue as far as availability of testing uh, equipment and access to results. So a little bit of information on um, the county and my feelings about phase two. And then finally, um, on Monday of this week, the Board of Commissioners voted to extend our 24-hour hold on um, rentals uh, in the belief that um, anything that we could do that might help slow the spread under these uh, conditions was a positive. Uh, I think it was said that um, you know, if we, uh, we, we may question the true effectiveness, but if um, there's no evidence that it's not at least uh, helpful, and um, therefore, if we save uh, one person and uh, save one death, uh, it's uh, an effort to try to limit the spread of the virus. So um, the county on uh, in, uh, in unincorporated areas has the 20-day, uh, 24-hour hold in effect until uh, August uh, 18th, I believe. So um, with that, um, any any other questions before we move on to Roy um, on uh, Ocean View? And I'll just let people go. If you got a question, speak up. All right, Rebecca, if you're trying to talk, your lips are moving, but I can't hear you. <laughs> I think she's on a different call. Okay. Thank you, Wayne. For a while, I was afraid my audio went out, but um, all right, we will move on um, to uh, Ocean View Drive. Uh, Roy's on the phone and um, or on the call virtually. So give us an update, Roy. All right, um, let's start with the permit process. Uh, we all know that uh, we're dealing with an area that, um, has middens that's um, in some places, uh, you know, an important archeological site. So we had to go through the process. Uh, we were scheduled to actually do digging early on in the year um, and uh, COVID got in the way. Basically the, the archeologists work through the University of Oregon and with just a day or two before they were to, scheduled to show up, uh, U of O canceled all outside work, and so they couldn't travel. Um, we did eventually get them on site. They did their work. Um, they produced a report. I viewed the report. Um, it was then sent to the local tribes for their review. It was then sent back. So we had uh, a final, a final report that then I received and then um, mid end of June, I sent the report to SHPO, which is the State Historic Preservation Office for their review. And I got email confirmation that they had, had received the report and that they would be viewing it, I guess, in a timely manner. Um, it's now, smack dab in the middle of July. I haven't heard anything yet. Um, I'm hoping that uh, before the end of the month that we get um, their, their review back. Um, the report didn't have any significant findings in it. It's pretty clean. I think basically we're gonna go, we're gonna get and get to go ahead to, to do the guardrail work um, that we wanted to do. Now, I had a conversation with Shannon I think it was like three weeks ago uh, regarding the guardrail. And she had asked about the possibility of, instead of a guardrail, uh, doing some rock work similar to what you see along 101 near the Sea Lion Caves. Um, I told her I'd look into that and I did. 
I didn't really find anything. I talked to ODOT. They really couldn't get me any numbers on on cost. Uh, they had they'd done some repairs, but they hadn't really built any new wall. And so I guess right now we're um, I don't know. I guess I need to talk to Shannon again, but I don't know that. Uh, the wall is a possible thing. I did tell her that if that was something that the city of Yahas wanted to pursue, that I would be more than willing to throw in the value of the guardrail that we, you know, what we would be spending on guardrail, uh, get turn that over to the city and they could put that towards, you know, whatever structure they wanted there. Um, but we haven't really talked any more about that. It was kind of more of a an idea that was thrown out. I did some research, didn't really come up with anything. Um, the county is gonna be doing their road striping next month, August. Um, it would be great if by then we had a final on uh, direction of travel on Ocean View. I would really love to be able to stripe it, and get that part of it done. Um, we, have, we still have time. I'm not trying to say that I'm pressed for time, but sometime in the next, Two or three weeks. It would be it would be nice to know that we can go ahead and and stripe it, and that would be the the permanent striping. Uh, other than that, that's kind of about it. Questions for Roy, and I'll go through the list uh, quickly. Uh, Max, any questions? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Um, how about Mary Ellen? Mary Ellen, we get your back. Still not hearing Mary Ellen. There you are. All right, we'll move on. Jim. Uh, nope, I have any questions. Leslie. Still not hearing. There. Now the mayor. Yeah, I'm I'm here, Doug. Um, uh, it's unfortunate we couldn't. Hear you. It's it's unfortunate we couldn't get the input from several of our commit uh, counselors, but. Um, originally, we were hoping to get our um, uh, transportation safety plan info and recommendations about uh, permanent direction. So uh, we do have another council meeting on the 5th. Uh, I'll chat with the city manager about whether or not we should discuss this and make a decision. But I, I'm, I'm not optimistic that we can have a, a final decision on striping by um, August 5th. But well, we'll see. And, that, and, that's, and that's fine. Um, I said it would be nice. I didn't say that it was absolutely necessary. I understand what you know what's happening. Um, it's worked, or it seems to have worked so far up to this point. I don't see there being a huge issue. It was just, you know, if if you need more time, that's great. But most likely, then it won't happen until about this time next year. And if you're fine with that. I'm fine with that. Okay, thank you, Roy. And um, I guess uh, I would encourage uh, any of the counselors that uh, with the technical challenges that we're all having, uh, if you have some questions, feel free to reach out to Roy. Um, I know uh, he'd be happy to answer emails or talk to people on the phone and um, appreciate your patience as uh, we we move forward. So. Um, Unless there's anything else, Roy, I'm going to jump down in the uh, agenda, skip over uh, Commissioner Hall for just a moment, and move on to the uh, County Health uh, Mobile Health Facility. And Rebecca, I hope you uh, hear me and uh, can uh, address that item on the agenda. And then uh, I believe that would enable you to be excused for the evening. Thank you, Commissioner. So yes, um, I am really here in the stead of my colleague, uh, Rebecca McBee-Wilson, who runs our community health center. 
And um, so just reporting out what she has told me is that, of course, that was our plan uh, pre-COVID, and it's probably been a couple years now since we've been looking into some kind of mobile health clinic uh, down in the Yahats area. Um, but we are sort of in COVID land now. All grants coming our way are very much tied to um, testing at our FQHC and uh, telemedicine. So we're not really seeing anything that could help us get a mobile clinic going. Um, probably isn't the best time to get that in place, but it's definitely uh, part of our strategic plan, which is a five-year plan. So um, we are, we will continue to uh, look for grant funding, which would really be the only way that we could operationalize something like this. So, um, and I think Rebecca was curious if um, how you all are feeling about us continuing to pursue this um, for the Yahats community. I'll let the counselors go uh, at your own initiative. If you have questions, thoughts. Well, this is Councilor uh, Jim Took. Uh, I don't have any a lot of questions. I understand the uh, the limitations and the constraints that everybody is facing at this point in time. I think it's something probably in the future council would like to pursue. Uh, but I understand uh, Rebecca's point of view, and uh, it's going to be difficult in, in, at this uh, time to move forward on this. So yeah, I think it's something we just want to keep uh, in the background and take advantage of it if or take advantage of any opportunities in the future. Great, thank and, you. Uh, and, and this is Mayor Moore. I just weigh in. I can't speak for the rest of the council, but I, I would think you know if, if grant funding is available to purchase a mobile unit that could be used not only here in Yahats but maybe some other cities like Siletz or wherever it could be used, that would be a good thing to pursue. Great. Thank you. I agree. And I remember, go ahead, Rebecca. No, that's all right. I'm done. I was just going to say, I remember, uh, well, it, I guess it's close to two years now. Uh, when I was on a campaign trail, this uh, question came up when I was in Yahats, and I continue to be a supporter. Um, I have had a conversation with Dr. Ogden at the hospital, and um, she was actually uh, enthusiastic about the, the possibility of trying to do something on a joint basis that, uh, as uh, I believe the mayor already pointed out, uh, could serve not only Yahats, but other areas of the county that don't have uh, more direct access to health care. So um, something that uh, I think is a, a good project, something we want to continue to support. And um, it may take a little patience under the COVID environment, but um, still something that uh, we'd like to see done. So. Any other thoughts or questions on that? Not a forgotten objective. All right, Rebecca, you're excused. Uh, I will say that I have found one advantage of these virtual meetings. You can have dinner and get up and walk to your meeting in a matter of a minute, or you can do it the other way. <laughs> so <laughs> enjoy your evening thank, and thank you for being thank here. Thank you, Commissioner. And thanks to all the council members. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye now. Uh, all right. Um, we'll go back up and pick up the county housing initiative. And uh, Commissioner Hall, um, you can uh, tell us about the honor you've received. And you're on mute if you're talking. Or are you having techno technical problems? You indicated. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't see Commissioner Hall on the list of people that are present. Um, um, some callers aren't identified, but Wayne, do you have any idea? I'm not sure. He. I know Claire was on here. She was yep. early and. I didn't actually look at what number she was on the list here. So, I, and she hasn't texted me or tried to call me on my cell phone. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe I can provide an answer. Oh. There, okay, Claire. Hey, oh, have you got me now? Yeah. 
but we got an echo. Okay. Yeah, I yeah, don't know I where know. that came from. Looks like Max, can you can you mute your phone, Max? Everybody but Claire, mute your phone. Everyone else has been muted. She's gone now. She was caller four. How about in the interim, if you'd like, I can give a little. Go bit ahead, Wayne. J just on a couple things with the. Um, uh, what we're doing on housing. Uh, actually, one of the things that uh, we can talk about is the county is proceeding. We're actually in the process of putting together an application right now um, for the low income housing rehabilitation grant that uh, Business Oregon provides through the Community Development Block Grant Program. And this is something that we um, identified in the Lincoln County Housing Strategy, which was adopted by all the communities and the county um, to move forward. And this is uh, what we want to do is really um, provide some additional funding to a program that's already underway. We're using uh, Dev Northwest, uh, and you guys are familiar with Dev Northwest, your community lending works. I know you guys have a program. We actually have a joint program, too, that's starting today uh, in terms of some business grants related to uh, the COVID response. Uh, but they have an arm that also does uh, housing, and that's Dev Northwest. And they are already doing some work in Lincoln County with money we would put out previously. And we're starting, the, again, the process of continuing to feed that particular program. So we'll be applying for somewhere in the neighborhood of about $400,000. When the county applies, we'll make it available countywide. Uh, all across the county, it doesn't matter which jurisdiction you're in. And then the plan is that in future years, uh, we'll get other uh, entities, especially uh, City of Lincoln City, City of Newport, uh, and City of Toledo, who have some capacity to actually apply for those grants on an annual basis so we can keep funneling money into this program. It was very effective in the past, and we'd like to see that uh, continue on because it keeps people in their homes. You know, one of the things we uh, we sometimes forget in, in the discussion about housing is it's not just creating new housing opportunities, but keeping the existing ones up and operating. So that's a um, a concrete step that we're taking, and we'll be um, hopefully getting word on that pretty shortly. All right, any questions of Wayne? And as you all see on the agenda, Commissioner Hall was appointed to the Oregon Housing Stability Council, and so we'll have a, a voice at that level within the, the state. I would just have one comment. It's just more of a suggestion than a question. I've often wondered if governments could cooperate with NGOs, say, for example, Habitat for Humanity. Habitat for Humanity basically builds new structures. It would seem that it would be nice if we could get some kind of a system where you could actually go in and rehab existing housing that's substandard to assist people that you know not to have a whole new house built but to help them rehab the home they're in uh just a thought uh, i don't know if anybody else ever thought about that and, and maybe that's not possible but it's always been kind of curious for me if that was something that uh, we could partner with and maybe move forward for some of these issues I certainly think that's a good idea and something that uh, I'll mention to Commissioner Hall uh, when uh, we next uh, talk <laughs> or meet virtually. Max, did you have a question? I see you leaning yes. forward. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering, the CSC used to have uh, rehab housing. And as I understand, there was, there was money left over in that. And uh, the uh, COG, Cascade uh, Council Governments has been in conversation with uh, CSC, and uh, I'm wondering if we're tapping into uh, any of those conversations. I assume, Actually, assume we will be, since I nominated uh, uh, com uh, Commissioner Hall to be Vice President of the COG Group. And actually, Councillor Glenn, that's a good question because that, that is the seed money that uh, Dev Northwest has right now, was that original money that was at CSC, which they managed on behalf of actually Newport, Lincoln City, 
Walport, Toledo, and Lincoln County had all received some funds. Uh, the monies that we got back went into a revolving loan fund, and that was kind of sitting there at CSE. That was the problem. That is the money that actually is the seed for uh, Dev Northwest for the program they've got underway, and we're now just adding more to it. So we're actually building on that existing program, but that was a great question. Good. Thank you. Yeah, good question for sure. One other comment. I, I noticed that the AmeriCorps thing uh, on Blodgett Road, the AmeriCorps program has a lot of building trades. Uh, training that they do and that might be something you know you we might have some kind of way that you could partner with them to help with rehab situations but uh, i have no idea what their restrictions are well certainly commissioner hall is in a position to uh i guess discuss those issues and see uh see what additional things might might be done uh, some good ideas so any other thoughts or comments We'll make sure that Commissioner Hall knows we talked about her a lot while she wasn't on the on the call. <laughs> All right. Um, next on the agenda would be vacation rentals and county policies. Uh, Wayne, do you want to start out, or do any of the councilors uh, have specific items uh, they'd like to mention first? Well, the only thing, this is Mayor Moore, the only thing I would mention before Wayne starts out is that our council meeting uh, from two to five today, yeah, we had lots of time to relax in between meetings. <laughs> At our council meeting today, uh, the Yahat City Council did drop the 24-hour hold in Yahats and move that to a one-hour hold, effective immediately. Just wanted to update you on that. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, before Wayne uh, says anything, I want to go back and I want to thank uh, the city council and the mayor of Yahats, uh, your willingness to put money available um, in support of businesses during these challenging times is uh, appreciated and uh, it's recognized. So I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, I just got a text from Claire. I've been on the line. I was unmuted, but uh, apparently couldn't be heard. So. Um, again, we talked about you a lot, Claire, if you can hear us, and uh, I'm sure you'll be following up and be available if uh, people have uh, other thoughts to share. So thank you. Um, Wayne, uh, anything from our side? Sure. Uh, maybe just a quick update. Uh, you know, we've all been discussing short-term uh, rentals and actually all lodging in the context of COVID-19, and I appreciate the update from the city because the board yep. had actually had that same discussion on Monday's meeting and actually voted um, to continue the 24-hour hold. So they're going to continue that until August 18th, uh, and, um, and that the, uh, they articulated a, a number of reasons for doing that. Uh, and even though that makes a, a different set of standards to, throughout the county, uh, I think some of the communities have gone to a three-hour hold, some have no, nothing, and you have a one-hour hold. Um, at this point, they feel that uh, that's, it still um, is part of the overall response that the county needs to be made to stop the virus. So that was the position the board took. In terms of just vacation rentals as a whole, um, you may recall that the county was uh, examining its own short-term rental uh, licensing program. And one of the key actions we took just pre-COVID was to actually uh, suspend the uh, issuance of new licenses. Uh, and we took a period of time in which we were going to look at um, some potential changes to our, our code provisions, uh, develop some additional resources, including some new software to track uh, data and information related to short-term rentals, uh, get additional code enforcement um, resources on board and move forward. And then, of course, uh, COVID hit. Uh, and what we did there is, um, at this point, the board was going to, in um, sometime in early May, was going to actually uh, re-examine uh, the suspension of uh, new licenses uh, and decide whether or not to possibly move forward with a cap uh, or uh, take some other action. And uh, what the board ended up doing was instead was to extend the, um, the, the short-term uh, rental license suspension uh, through September 30th. Uh, and so we're continuing to work on the code provisions here. Obviously, it's taken a backseat to some other more pressing matters, uh, but we'll be coming back and looking at, I think, a variety of things uh, before September. If you haven't heard, um, there likely will be an initiative measure 
um, that is um, underway and maybe circulating in the county concerning uh, short-term uh, rentals. Um, some folks, uh, I think, have been looking at this situation, uh, looking at some of the responses that have been made in the COVID era here, and thinking that they want to do things a little bit differently here. Um, and so stay tuned for that. We'll probably have more information on that initiative measure in the next couple of weeks um, in terms of where that is and where that might be going uh, and when it might actually, uh, if they get the requisite number of signatures, get on a ballot. Um, so we continue to, to um, look at uh, other ways to uh, improve our code provisions and we'll be coming back to the board sometime before the end of September with those particular recommendations. Uh, and the board will take up again the question of whether or not to uh, continue a suspension on new um, license applications or put in place some kind of cap. Uh, Max, I saw you raise your hand. Go ahead. You're first alphabetically, too. <laughs> okay. Uh, just an observation and maybe a suggestion. Uh, this is an area where I think it would be helpful to have some uh, unified policies. I've begun to see advertising, uh, particularly before the uh, COVID, uh, to say, uh, go with us because we, we don't have to follow the rules that Yahats has, and which was implying that they would uh, uh, were in the county. And so uh, I'm, uh, I'm thinking that uh, and suggesting that you you might take a, a hard look at the policies that Yahats has in place. We spend an awful lot of time uh, on refining these policies. They're not perfect in any means, but uh, it would be helpful, I think, so we don't get one uh, being played off against another in this industry. And, and Councillor Glenn, I appreciate that. And we actually have looked at the other ones. Unfortunately, in Lincoln County, we have a number of jurisdictions and everybody has totally different schemes and totally <laughs> different regulations. So, you know, the, sure. Lincoln City does it one way, Newport does it another way, Yahats does it a third way. So uh, it's very difficult for the county in that sense to, uh, to try and match everything that's out there. So. No. But I appreciate it. We do. We actually look and share. We, and it's something I know that with city managers, with uh, with Shannon Beaucaire and uh, the city managers in in uh, Lincoln City, Newport, especially who have these things. We talk about this in short term rentals and issues with that all the time. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Yep, sure. I would also say that I think there's uh, an effort, uh, certainly on my part, and I've seen it reflected in the actions of other commissioners to uh, where, where it's practical or feasible to try to to try to have some commonality or alignment uh, when uh, when it makes sense. So, uh, point well taken. Any other only questions, comment, Jim? The only go ahead. That I, think is, is that, that I keep trying to emphasize, and I talk to people, and when I speak at the council and stuff, <laughs> this is all tough. This is all hard. All these things are hard, especially right now. But I try to tell people and make them understand, well, you can't make them understand anything, but I try to tell people, here's the deal. If we do not get this under control by a combination of government action, community action, and overall cooperation, at some point, everything's going to get shut down again. If you look at uh, things like Miami-Dade County, now this is in Florida where they fought every possible constriction that was being thrown their way. The mayor shut down all short-term rentals in Miami-Dade County. If you can imagine what that would be like, I mean, of course, we're not there, we're not that big, but again, if we don't get it under control, it's gonna come back and bite us. And uh, I just tell the people, you know, uh, we're gonna give you a little more leeway, we trust you to do the right thing, but we'll see what happens. I would agree with those sentiments. Um, any other comments? Uh, I don't know if uh, Mary Ellen, uh, if you've got uh, audio back, uh, any questions? Well, we keep trying. Leslie. All right, um, the mayor. 
No, I, I, I concur with the uh, the comments previously echoed, and I, I uh, Wayne, I, I, I hear your pain. You know, when we started this whole thing several months ago, when we got into COVID, at, at that first meet, joint meeting, uh, we had pretty solid agreement between almost all of our cities in Lincoln County, and we've all kind of gone our separate directions. So it's it's tough for the county to end up with a position that's going to work with all cities. But that's all I got. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, let's move on to the uh, question about the financial outlook and uh, impact on Yahats. Um, I guess as a former banker, I'll say uh, things are tough. Uh, but Wayne, um, I know you have some uh, information. Well, a couple of things um, related to that. So, of course, we've completed our budget process, uh, and you know we ha we have impacts from COVID. Uh, but we also have some impacts, you know, structural kinds of things that we're looking at as we look to the future. Um, and um, one of the things that we're monitoring very closely right now, uh, and, and it's sort of uh, aligns with what you're saying, what's the impact on Yahats from the county budget? But well, we're looking at what's the impact on Lincoln County from the state budget. And that's a big issue right now. Uh, the legislature um, is going to have another special session here. Uh, and to deal with just specifically budgetary issues. And unfortunately, because of the projections they've got from their revenue forecasts, um, they uh, had talked about some cross the board cuts at a certain percentage level, but that was months ago. And by the time they actually get around to doing it, it's gonna concentrate it now to prob probably a year's impact uh, that they're gonna have to make their uh, appropriate cuts. And so we're gonna see some, um, changes. We're going to see some uh, uh, impacts on our budget, the portions of our budget which are funded by the state, and that'll pass down in the services we can provide for citizens around the county, including those in Yahats. Um, I will say this, the, the one interesting aspect of this, and I know you guys um, are participants with the League of Oregon Cities, is some of the CARES Act funding. Um, and I, I think there was a question that, that Shannon had sent our direction about whether or not you need to have an emergency declaration um, in order to qualify for getting some reimbursement for some of those funds. Um, I, I, I can't give you the, that legal advice. I would really recommend you talk to your attorney specifically, but I can tell you this, the Board of Commissioners has extended its emergency declaration. We're coinciding with the uh, state of Oregon uh, and we will continue that. And uh, th this may be, um, uh, something that it's an abundance of caution, but we're likely going to be in this uh, for a, a long period of time, and we're going to try and keep that declaration uh, active, even though we understand and any, any kind of emergency you have the response, uh, but then you have recovery and rebuilding. And those we do know under the CARES Act, at least the guidance that we've gotten from the Treasury Department, uh, those qualifying expenditures uh, for those activities, recovery and rebuilding, um, do qualify as long as they're spent within um, the time frame, which runs to the end of December. So um, that's probably important to you as you look at your response and any expenses that, that you've incurred that you might want to uh, get reimbursed. But otherwise, um, of course, uh, a big impact on us, um, and it's at, at this point unknown, is um, our transient room taxes. Uh, although it ours is significantly less than I know the city of Yahats, um, Lincoln City, and Newport. It's a smaller percentage of our overall budget um, than it is for your community. So, um, but we're all going to monitor that. We're going to look at that. We do know that on a federal level, um, the current um, uh, iteration of uh, federal uh, aid, which is going to be forthcoming, we think within the next month, includes at least consideration under the House passed version of the HEROES Act, includes consideration of replacing lost revenue to local governments and state governments. I, I wish I could predict and say that's something that's going to be included in the final version. Uh, I'm not so sure it is. Um, I think that's a point of contention. Uh, in Washington, and so we'll see where that goes. But that might be something that at least gets us over the the uh, initial uh, bump of what we're doing financially. Um, but we, we continue to uh, work very carefully at being um, fiscally conservative. The, the leadership, the board is, ex um, 
has exhibited over the last few years have really put us in a pretty good position to, to try and weather this as we go forward. We're not going to obviously see any growth uh, in, in activities or services out there, but um, we're monitoring the situation very carefully. We've instituted some additional um, check-ins that we're doing on a more regular basis and early on in the fiscal year to see where things are going and how they progress. Um, and from there, we'll just move forward. Thank you, Wayne. Um, questions from uh, councillors or mayor? None for me. Okay. Um, I, I, thinking about the the changes that uh, we've implemented, if you will, within the county, and as uh, Wayne indicated, uh, previously we used to look at budget adjustments uh, semi-annually. We're now looking at budget adjustments uh, quarterly, and we've tightened up some of the um, uh, fund uh, appropriations, recognizing uh, one in particular that uh, no position, if you uh, have a resignation or a vacancy created, no no position or very rare is the position filled exactly on the day that the person uh, leaves. So that creates some, um, if you will, uh, flexibility in a budget that uh, really uh, we've tightened up on and we've, I believe, budgeted about a seven and a half percent reduction in most of the personnel services to reflect the fact that when vacancies occur, people aren't hired immediately to replace those people. So that kind of tightens up the budget and forces people to be a little uh, little um, sharper with their pencils when it comes to uh, budgets and salaries. So that's an example. Um, any other questions? We've got uh, two items and about two minutes, but um, we can uh, take a little extra time. Uh, but any questions on um, financials? All right. Um, next would be uh, planning department policy on certificate of occupancy. I don't know if that's a particular question from counselors or um, if uh, Wayne, you have some uh, information. I'm not actually sure either if it's, I, I know that there is a specific issue that we've got um, that we've been dealing with, with um, with the city and um, some permits out there. And I would prefer not to discuss a specific uh, uh, issue because we've been having some discussions with the city attorney uh, around what next steps might be. And so that's not something I'm really comfortable with discussing the particulars of that. If there's some general questions, I'd be happy to answer those if I can. Or maybe if Shannon I, has something. If I can Help try us, to, Shannon. If I can try to paraphrase Councillor Voller's um, what I remember Councillor Voller's concern about this, since she hasn't been able to unmute herself, is there was just a general question about how does the county planning department uh, file certificate of occupancies? How far back is certificate of occupancies? We found some other um, generally older buildings. Uh, when we've asked for them, they may not be on file. And so what is just the general expectation of the county in filing and how far back certificate of occupancies go and i hope i'm paraphrasing that correctly and i appreciate that i don't have the answer uh in terms of what the records are and how they're kept um and this is this has been a little bit of an issue with some of the jurisdictions in which we're providing the service but you know a certificate of occupancy uh, not only means compliance with the building regulations but also planning regulations and when we're not doing both elements of it sometimes i'm not sure where all the paperwork goes for all that but i'd be happy to find uh ask that specific question and see if i can get you back some uh, additional answers on that particular issue and, and we'll make sure Anno uh, planning director is involved too. Great. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you. All right. That brings us to the last item. And I think a similar situation. Uh, we're not sure what the, the question is about uh, the Riggs property. Uh, I do see the agenda mentions lawsuits. So I'm always uh, cautious about what we talk about with the potential of a lawsuit. Um, so I don't know if there's uh, some 
general questions or uh, Wayne, uh, if, if you, I don't believe you have much uh, insight. Maybe I the actually, mayor or Shannon. Uh, again, uh, a citizen came to us, if I remember correctly, um, and was concerned that the property had been reclassified. And there has been some discussion after that when it was brought up of whether it has or has not. And so my guess is if this could, if I could work with Wayne and we could research this issue and maybe come back to it and advise the commission and the council of what we have found about whether or not it has. Been. Oh, and there's your cuckoo clock. I was going to say, I can't mute my phone to cancel the cuckoo because then you won't hear me. So I guess that's not a, a very subtle, it's not subtle reminder that uh, it is seven o'clock. It's but, not subtle. Uh, yeah. Um, just to finish that thought, though, I I, uh, I know Wayne, i uh, happy to work with you, Shannon, and um, get uh, get some answers. So both, both those last two items are... Uh, Good questions, and uh, we'll work to get them clarified. So, with that, um, go. Somebody have something to say? I think I want to borrow your cuckoo clock for our own council meetings, if that's okay. <laughs> well, I tell you that that cuckoo clock has a special part and uh, place in my heart. Uh, my wife and I took a trip to Germany and bought it in Triburg, which is the cuckoo clock capital of Germany. And I uh, had it shipped home, and it's uh, been on the wall for uh, several years and uh, part of our lives. Anyhow, uh, any um, yeah, Max, you have your hand up. Go ahead. I just, I just wanted to say thank you for uh, the work that you all provide and the funds you provide for the social service grants. We just completed this last week, and I, I enjoy being on that committee, and there's a lot of work put into that. But I think we're one of the few counties that uh, uh, make funds available to nonprofits. So I think we can be proud that over $3 million has gone in to nonprofits from the county over the course of a number of years. And thank you, Max, for your service on that uh, committee. And um, you are right. When I tell other commissioners from other counties about the uh, uh, program, the first question they ask is, where do you get the money from? And I tell them it's general funds and they go, oh, oh. so um, thank you for your service. And um, it, uh, I think uh, I agree, has been a good program. Other uh, thoughts? Um, um, no, the, the only thing I would add, Commissioner Hunt, is that uh, I would echo uh, Shannon's comment earlier. I might like to borrow that cuckoo clock once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have a hard time getting it out of our house. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Um, and let me um, offer my, uh, I guess, apologies to Leslie and Mary Ellen. I'm sorry uh, for whatever technical problems you weren't able to participate, but feel free to email me or uh, email Wayne if you have questions that uh, you didn't get a chance to uh, raise tonight. And uh, we'll certainly uh, get answers back to you. And um, I, uh, I really thank everyone. Again, 100% attendance from your city council is uh, outstanding and um, much appreciated. Unless anybody has some last words, uh, it is now 7.03. The cuckoo clock has sounded and um, I will adjourn the meeting. All right, thank you all and uh, have you. a good evening. Bye-bye.